The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. I'm Karen, and it's time to learn about another sensor, thermistors. Thermistors are variable resistors whose resistance changes based on temperature changes in its environment. The word comes from a combination of thermal and resistor. There are two types of thermistor, NTCs and PTCs. NTC stands for negative temperature coefficient, while PTC stands for positive temperature coefficient. With NTC thermistors, a rise in temperature causes a decrease in resistance. Therefore, a decrease in temperature causes a rise in resistance. So warmer equals less resistance, colder equals more resistance. Positive temperature coefficient, or PTC, thermistors have a resistive response that aligns with the temperature change. As the temperature increases, the resistance also increases. As the temperature decreases, so does the resistance. In previous lessons, we've learned that semiconductors may have a free floating electron in negative n-type regions, or holes for those electrons to fill in positive p-type regions. When semiconductor components are connected to an electric current, the particles are drawn to the opposing charges with the free electrons moving into the holes and continuing to be drawn along towards the positive power terminal. When an NTC thermistor gets warmer, the electrons become more excited moving faster. The current increases, therefore by Ohm's law, the resistance decreases. When the thermistor gets colder, the electrons slow down, making it harder for current to flow with an increased resistance. Fixed resistors may also be affected by temperature changes, but as you can see here, they maintain a consistent resistance until they reach a high enough temperature, here about 70 degrees Celsius, where their resistance begins to degrade in a linear fashion. The resistance changes thermistors experience tends to be more nonlinear. With NTC thermistors, the nonlinear change in resistance is not consistent with the change in temperature. In certain temperature ranges, the resistance may change a large amount from one degree to the next, while in a different temperature range, the change may be less significant. There are three main types of PTC thermistors, each with a different makeup, and each experiencing a different nonlinear response to temperature changes. The first but less common type are silisters. Due to their doped silicon makeup, Silisters have a near-linear temperature resistance curve, which is determined by the amount of doping used. The second type, polymer PTCs, are called resettable fuses. They're made of a slice of plastic embedded with carbon grains. At room temperature, the carbon grains are in close contact with each other, forming a conductive path through the device. As the thermistor heats up, the plastic expands, pushing the grains farther apart, increasing its resistance. PPTCs have near-linear temperature resistance curves. The majority of PTC thermistors are the third type, which are made from doped polycrystalline ceramic. They're called switching PTCs, because at low starting temperatures, they observe slight NTC behaviors, but once they reach a certain critical temperature, their resistance increases dramatically. While thermistors don't have a linear change, this equation can be used to calculate the curve of NTC thermistors. The beta value is calculated using the readings at two temperatures, with temperature measured in Kelvin. On an NTC thermistor datasheet, you can find the beta value within a certain temperature range. Here are examples on datasheets that list beta values at temperature ranges of 0 to 50, 25 to 100, and 25 to 85. These numbers can be put into the equation, factoring the conversion from Celsius to Kelvin, to plot the points of the curve. As you've seen so far, thermistors come in a variety of shapes. Their semiconductor material is typically encapsulated with either epoxy or glass, protecting them from humidity, corrosion, and mechanical stress, making them waterproof, rugged, and quite stable. Some thermistors are color band coated with their resistance value, similar to fixed resistors. Thermistors have a variety of uses, most often NTC thermistors being used for temperature sensing and PTC thermistors being used as fuses. NTC thermistors are used in everyday common appliances that require temperature sensing, like in digital thermometers, toasters, coffee makers, refrigerators, 
motor oil monitoring, 3D printer hot ends, and more. NTC thermistors can also be used in series with a circuit as inrush current limiters. Inductive devices such as motors and transformers experience a high inrush current when they first turn on. When placed in series, the resistance of the NTC thermistor can restrict that inrush current. As the device runs, the current causes the NTC to heat up, lowering its resistance. Electrical current passing through a device often causes resistive heating. When we talk about a voltage drop, it is frequently energy lost to heat. Devices are limited at how quickly they can dissipate heat, so too large of a current can cause the device to heat up. As we've learned, the resistance of a PTC increases with its temperature, making them useful for protecting circuits, as current limiting devices or even fuses. Thermistors are only one type of temperature sensor. There are also resistance temperature detectors, or RTDs, thermocouples, and other temperature sensing chips. Thermocouples and RTDs are very similar to thermistors, except they are made of pure metals. Rather than changing resistance, their two dissimilar metals produce a temperature-dependent voltage, which can be used to determine temperature. Compared to thermistors, they can measure more extreme temperatures, measuring a temperature range from negative 270 up to 3000 degrees Celsius. But they are less accurate, more expensive, have slower response times, and require an amplifier to properly interpret readings. There are also temperature sensor chips of varying types with either analog or digital output options. Thermistors are cheap, durable, precise, easy to waterproof, can work at any voltage, and basically have the same advantages as fixed resistors. The downside of thermistors is that they require an ADC to interpret temperature value, they operate within a limited temperature range, they cannot withstand extreme temperatures, and when handling high currents, they can self-heat and potentially become damage or show errors, so they are often used with low-level currents. When choosing a thermistor, low temperature applications generally use lower resistance thermistors, while higher temperature applications generally use higher resistance thermistors. Epoxy-coated thermistors can withstand temperatures between negative 50 and 150 degrees Celsius, while glass-coated thermistors can withstand temperatures up to 300 degrees Celsius. When it comes to needing to sense temperature in a circuit, thermistors are a cheap, reliable, and durable solution. Be sure to check out my next video, where I show a fun way to use a thermistor in a project. Put a lot of heart into that one. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments about thermistors, you can post those on the Element 14 community, where you can find me as Maker Karen on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning. Thank you.